Was she killed out of jealousy? Or was she killed because of some sinister pact? Hello, true crimers. This is another true crime in a short amount of time, and it is the case of Daniela Perez. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Daniela Ferrante Perez, she was born on August 11th, 1970 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Her mother was actually a well-known screenwriter there in Brazil. And as she grew up, Daniela was basically exposed to the limelight, exposed to, you know, the entertainment industry, and she aspired to become an actress. And that's exactly what she became, an actress. Her mother, Gloria Perez, uh, was writing a soap opera. The show was called De Corpa y Alma, and I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that in some way. Daniela would play the young and beautiful Yasmin, and they cast a young male actor named Guillerme de Padua to play her on-screen boyfriend. Guillerme was a married man in, in real life, and he was married to Paula Tomas. By all accounts, Paula was a bit of a, a jealous woman and perhaps maybe a teensy bit controlling. But her husband was now going to be the star of a soap opera and so, you know, money would come in. So, woohoo! Except Guillerme, apparently his character was really only going to be like a really small role. And so what he allegedly w tried to do without the knowledge of his wife, Paola, was to see, hey, maybe if I sleep with the writer's daughter, perhaps I can get a meteor role, something a little bit bigger. And this is when the alleged affair between Daniela and Guillerme started. I say alleged because it's never truly been confirmed that there was an actual affair between the two, or if there was just more of like an attraction between the two. But for Guillerme, he, he just really wanted to get close to her for his own selfish reasons. He wanted to try to get something more uh, in, this, in this TV show. And quite frankly, he was kind of concerned that he was not going to have a job anymore. And then, uh, allegedly sometime later, Guillerme told Paula that he was having an affair with Daniela. Uh-oh, not a good idea there, bud. And so Paula, being the jealous, you know, kind of revengeful person that she is, well, she wanted to act on this. Now, this is where kind of the discrepancy comes in or the we don't know what the actual truth comes in. We do know what physically happened. We just don't know for sure what the motivation was behind it. On December 28th, 1992, uh, Guillerme and Daniela had just wrapped up filming an episode of the soap opera. And Guillerme told Daniela, let's go down to the beach and let's hang out. And this was kind of in the evening time at this point. And so Daniela says, okay, let's go do it. What Daniela did not know was that in the back of Guillerme's car, it's Paula. She was hiding in the back. So when Guillerme got to this secluded area of the beach... Paula came out of the vehicle and began to accost Daniela. Essentially, this was an argument that started between the three of them. And exactly what was said and what was done in that argument is not really known for sure. There is another theory that Guillerme did not ask Daniela to come with him to the beach, that instead Guillerme and Paula got into their vehicle and just simply followed Daniela and just sort of kind of uh, made her go off the road in this beach area and then confront her. It's not 100% known. What is known is that there was a confrontation between the three of them on this secluded area of a beach. Daniela was then stabbed 18 times with a pair of scissors and the couple, after they were done stabbing her 18 times, they threw the scissors into the ocean. They then took Daniela's body and they hid her body 
in the kind of like in these bushes sort of nearby in a kind of like in a very desolate area and then the two of them just went their happy way uh, they just left her body and then just kind of went about their business Daniela's body was found relatively quickly um, and the crazy part is that when her body was found two of the people to console Daniela's parents were Guillerme and Paula, they were seen hugging her and just consoling her. I'm so sorry for your loss. And Guillerme put on the waterworks to, to, you know, make it look like he was like so distraught and sad. And it didn't take him long to just break. Police didn't have to investigate this for more than like a day or two. Because very, very quickly afterwards, Guillerme just broke down and confessed. He told them that he was the one to stab her after there was an argument between the three of these people. And so he was arrested and charged, and then his wife was arrested and charged as well. Here's where the motivations or the why we did this came into play. There are two reasons that basically were thought of or given. One, Paola found out about this affair and she got really pissed off and jealous and she wanted to kill Daniela. And so when she made Guillerme bring Daniela to the beach, Guillerme allegedly, in this scenario, had no knowledge that Paola was going to kill Daniela. But that is what one story claims happened, that they got out of hand, Paola was already prepared with scissors, and then she just began to repeatedly stab Daniela 18 times. And then Guillerme just had no choice but to be like, what the, what's going on? The other side of this is a secret pact between Paola and Guillerme. The secret pact was when they got married, if either one of them was found out to have cheated on the other spouse, then they would collectively together kill the person that they were having the affair with. That's the other theory. Paola found out about this affair between Guillerme and Daniela, and now she said, well, we're enacting the pact now. Now we gotta kill her. Guillerme basically said he was the one to stab her. And then he eventually recanted his entire confession. And then Paola was basically putting all the blame on Guillerme. And at one point, the two of them were saying, no, it was the other spouse who killed uh, Danielle. It was the other spouse who planned this entire thing. They just, they just pointed the fingers at each other. Uh, and while both were in jail, they, they divorced. And both would end up going on trial for the exact same murder charges. Here's the insane thing. Even though this was likely premeditated to a degree, or more than to a degree, depending on how you look at it, they were both convicted of the murder of Daniela Perez. But they both only got six years. Six years for a brutal, likely premeditated murder of this young 22-year-old actress six years and they're they're free they're out and about now they're they're out there in the world guillerme has apparently turned his whole life around now and he is now a pastor go figure i wonder what he thinks about the whole thou shall not kill thing because of brazilian law at the time the fact that they only got such minimal amount of time for a brutal homicide this case had to be the one that caused them to revamp some things and change legislation and fix criminal code and fix punishments. And so now, if convicted of murder of this nature, there is now a much, much stronger punishment, much longer, lengthier punishment for murder, as it should be. I'm always in the boat that if you commit premeditated murder, you should never see the uh, outside of a jail cell the rest of your life. That's just me. But I'm crazy, so there's that. Daniela Perez was an up-and-coming actress who had a very, very promising career. She was going to do many great things, and she was going to go places. But because of a woman's jealousy, which the jealousy I understand, right? You're a married woman. This man is possibly having an affair with someone. But she took her jealousy way too far. And now this beautiful young actress, well, the world will never know what she could have become. But 
That is the end of this case, True Crime Aroonies. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, please give this channel the old subscribe and like this video uh, because it pushes it out to the YouTube universe, I think. I tell four true crime stories a week here on YouTube. I also tell one on Instagram, one on Facebook, and then a few throughout the week over on TikTok. So feel free to follow me elsewhere. All of the links to my socials are in the description below. Next, if you have a case you want me to cover, please email me at mikey at truecrimer.com. If you check my case list, which is in my link tree, scroll through that list. I know it's long, it's alphabetical. If you don't see the name, then email me the name, where it happened, when it happened, and then I can add it to the list. If you do see the name already on there, do not email it to me, it's already there. I pick my cases as randomly as I can to cover. I will cover it eventually, I just don't know when. Next, if you want to support me in any way, we do some merch, like this cool owl shirt with a little staircase, if you know, you know, plus other shirts with just my my uh, page name. Uh, we also sell a cuckoo, kachu, wackadoo shirt and other things and a wine glass, hoodies and whatnot. Uh, we do ship internationally. If you have Discord and you want to join my Discord server, the link is also below. Please be over the age of 18. If not, you will be kicked out of there for goodsies. But that is it for this video, True Crime, Rooney Dooney Ding Dongs. And today we'll close this video. We'll do a Cards Against Humanity Green Box edition. I don't really know why that's special, but it is. So I'm gonna choose a random, two random cards and see if it makes a funny story. If not, oops, I'm sorry. All right, so the, the black card is, hey, what sucks, balls? <laughs> happy daddies with happy sandals. I don't know what that means, but I guess happy daddies with happy sandals sucks balls. Oh, really? What? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that's, <clears throat> that's the end of uh, that. So, uh, well, this is awkward. <laughs> okay. Love you. Bye-bye.